Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today is finally the day to where we're going to kind of discover some uh, derivative properties, which are quote unquote shortcuts. Um, I do want to defy the directions on these first four problems. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I want you to do these first four, and then I'm going to pause. And I hope you actually do these first four because these properties mean a lot more when you discover them on your own rather than me just telling you them. So what I want to do is I want you to grab your calculator and rather than gra open a graphing page like they're saying, I want you to graph open a calculator page, okay? And what we're going to do in here is we are going to, for these first four, is we are going to come in and we're going to come to our little template here just next to the book and we're going to grab this d over d box with the box on the side. This is our derivative template. Now we can type these in. Our independent variable is going to be x and what we want to find the derivative of is we want to find the derivative of x. Well, so what this is going to do, this is going to give us an algebraic derivative and it's going to give one. Well, that shouldn't be any big shock, okay? Um, y equals x is the equation of a line, the identity line. The slope is one everywhere. So <clears throat> let's come on to the next one and let's uh, not go menu, I'm sorry. Uh, let me come out of there, escape. Let's come back to our template. Let's grab our dx and let's say x. And let's come in the box here and let's say x squared. So what is our algebraic derivative for the x squared? And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to say it's 2 times x. So what I would like you to do is I'd like you to do 3 and 4, okay, and fill them in in your sheet that you have here, like we just said, uh, derivative of f is 1. Derivative of f is 1, derivative of uh, f of x equals x squared, f prime is 2x. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do 2 and 3, and I would like to see if you could project the property or the power rule prior to me telling it to you. Okay, so go ahead and do those. So if you did these first four, you found out the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of x squared is 2x, x cubed is 3x squared, x to the fourth is 4x, whoop, I got that one botched there. It's really not 4x squared, it's 4x cubed is what my calculator told me. And quite frankly, in pre-calc, if you'd have been able to do all your limits last year or all your difference quotients, you would have found out that the property rule is n times x raised to the n minus 1 power. So if you notice, what happened here is my exponent, which is n, came in front for the 3. And what happened is my power dropped by 1 degree each time. Notice that 4 came in front of the x and the exponent dropped by one power. So what we do is we take that exponent in front of the x, multiply it times x, and drop that exponent by one power. That is the power rule. So what we'll do is hopefully we're gonna to come to our note sheet here and we're discovering our properties and we're using our CAS calculator to do this. So the power rule, the derivative in terms of x of x to the n is n times x raised to the n minus 1 power. So we just drop that power 1. The next one we're going to look at here is our constant multiple rule. Okay, I would really like you to do the exact same thing here. So meaning if I came here, uh, where is it? If I came here and I can come right up and I can grab my same template and I can come in here and I can delete that and I can say, okay, what is it for 4x squared, okay, what is it for 4x squared? I hit enter, and what I find is I find the derivative is 8x, okay? Do the next 5 or 6, 7, 8, and 9, and let's project what the constant multiple rule is, and I will be back in a second. Okay, so if we did 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, we found out the derivative of, uh, we found out f prime of 4x squared, f prime is 8x. And negative 2x cubed, f prime is negative 6x squared. And the derivative of 7x is 7. Well, this one makes really, really good sense, hopefully, um, because this is the equation of a line. 
Therefore, the slope is 7 everywhere on that line. Therefore, the derivative is 7 everywhere. Hopefully, these two special cases right here make sense as well. Because f of x equals 6 is the graph of a horizontal line at 6, which means the derivative of a horizontal line is 0, and negative 3 is a horizontal line at y equals negative 3, which is slope is 0. But how did we get these two? Well, when we're looking at the constant multiple rule, basically what we're finding is the derivative of f prime in these next ones is my constant in front times um, g prime, g prime of x, okay? Where I'm taking my constant and where I'm calling uh, this 4. So I'm really looking at 4 times x squared. So I'm taking the derivative of that, which is 4 times 2 to the x using my power rule. 4 times 2 is 8 to the first power. And this next one is really negative 2 times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x. Drop the power 1 squared. That's where the negative 6 is coming from. So what we're going to do is, if I can find my right sheet on here, what we're going to do is we're going to call the constant multiple rule here. And granted, we would be going through this a lot more uh, in depth in class, okay? But it's virtual learning, so we're going to get her to you. So the derivative of here is going to be k times f prime of x, okay? So what that means is, is my constant simply gets multiplied by the derivative of my function, is all, all that means, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to put all these rules together here pretty quick. So what we're going to come on to now is we're going to look at the derivative of a constant. We don't really need to look at that. That's 8 and 9. If f of x is a constant, which is just a number, then the derivative, because the slope of a, of a horizontal line is 0, f prime is 0. So the derivative of k, where k is a constant, k equals a number, okay? It's a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. What we're really going to look at next is the sum and difference property, where we can take our polynomials or conglomeration of our polynomials and different functions that are added and subtracted with, with respect to each other, and we can find out what their derivative is. So if I did that, let's come right back here, and let's look at number 10 and 11, okay? Let's just take a peek at 10 and 11, because there's terms that are added and subtracted here. So why don't you go through and, and type those into your CAS calculator, okay, right here, and find the derivative of those, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, well, if you went through here and you actually took this first problem and you typed in the derivative of negative 2x plus 5x minus 6, you found out it was 5 minus 2x, which is the exact same as what I have written here in descending order, negative 2x plus 5. Well, what, it, what, what really happened in the sum and difference property? And in the 1 third uh, x to the third, uh, minus one half x squared. What really happened there? Okay. Well, let's let's take a quick little look at this. And what the sum and difference property actually does is the sum and difference property allows you to say, okay, well, I have a whole bunch of different functions or different terms, so I can take the derivative of the first term plus or minus the derivative of the second term as I continue going on, which means if I took negative x squared, well, I don't even need to rewrite that, okay? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to power rule this first one. So 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2x. If I drop the power 1, I get to 1. This is really a 5x to the first, 1 times plus, 1 times 5 is 5. And that's going to be x to the power of 0. Well, remember, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So that's why that portion of it goes away. And then I actually look here, minus 6, the derivative of a constant, is this next one right up here. It's 0, so that's where the negative 2x plus 5 comes from. Well, when I look at 11, I really, I'm putting together kind of my constant multiple rule here and the power property before 
So I'm going to take my constant of one-third times, now I'm going to take the derivative, which is 3x squared minus the constant times the derivative of the term, which is 2x to the first. Well, one-third times 3, those cancel each other out. I get my x squared. And minus 1 half times 2, those two cancel each other out, and I just get x to the first. So that just means we can apply our power rule, okay, the power rule right here to polynomials, polynomial functions, and what that does is I'm going to power rule each independent term and find the derivative, okay? So if I came back to my note sheet, if I can find my, my note sheet, what that means is, is when I'm taking the derivative of a sum or difference of terms, it's simply the derivative of each term plus or minus the derivative of the next term, okay? That's, that's all it means, and these properties are sweet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. I don't think I have this one on here. But what I want to do is I want to say, whoa, I want to say, whoa, but let's check this out here. Now, let's look at 1 over x. Let's type these three, okay, in the same way we did before and show me what you get and tell me what if, if um, does the power rule hold true for numbers besides whole numbers, meaning negative whole numbers and rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers are simply fractions. So why don't you type these three in quick and tell me what you get for your uh, derivatives on those using your CAS calculator. Okay, so if we do number 12, 13, and 14, if we type in the derivative of 1 over x, we get negative 1 over x squared, okay? And if you typed in the derivative of the square root of x, you should have got 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And the derivative of the cube root of x squared came out to be 2 over 3 times x to the 1 third. Well, let's take a little gander at what those actually kind of look like. Well... What does that mean? Well, let's look at number 12. Well, if I rewrote 1 over x, 1 over x to the first power, I could rewrite that technically as x to the negative 1 power. Well, if I did that and I took the derivative and I used the power rule, I'd have negative 1 times x, negative 1 minus 1 would be minus 2, which actually equals negative 1 over x squared. Boo boo, check that out. When I'm looking at x, the square root of x, well, what's another way to write the square root of x? Well, wouldn't that be x to the one half power? Well, if I power rule this and I took my exponent down, well, that's one half x. Well, what's one half minus one? That would be negative one half. Well, that's the same as one over. 2x to the 1 half power, which is the square root of x, okay? And think about this. The cube root of x squared, what I always want to think about with my properties is I really want to see, okay, remember, roots are trees, okay? The root goes in the denominator. I always want to see my exponents so I can use the power rule because this is going to give me 2 thirds x well, what is 2 thirds minus 1? That would give me negative 1 third. Well, doesn't that give me 2 over 3 times? Because here's my negative exponent. That's technically going to go in the denominator where it is. And that's the same as, that's really crappy, but that's a cubed root of x is how these properties work. So does the power rule hold true for numbers other uh, numbers besides whole numbers, meaning negative whole numbers, yes, it does. We can see that right here in number one. And does it work for fractional exponents, meaning rational numbers in the exponent? Yes, it also works there because we can see it in 13 and 14, where I can take my, my power rule of a half, bring it in front, so I have one half times x, and a half minus one is negative a half, and because that exponent's negative, that's why it's going down into the denominator, all right? So what we're gonna do, 
hopefully. Whoa, where's my right notebook? That's, uh, that's not my right notebook. I want this one. That's not the one I want either. I want this one. So as I'm coming across, we just use that for our power rule too, <clears throat> or fractional exponents, negative exponents. And what we want to do is we just want to hammer through a few examples here. Okay, find the derivative, that's what that means, d over dx, it means find f prime, okay? Find the derivative of the following using your properties. Well, if I'm taking the derivative of x to the 6, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my power down. I'm going to say 6 times x to the, drop my power 1. This is work we never show. It's all as mental math. We're going to jump straight to 6x to the 5th power. That is my derivative. Now, if I use the sum and difference here, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 4 times the derivative of x to the 5th, which again is mental math, which is going to be 5x to the 4th, plus there's a 1 there that's really going to give me 1x to the 1 minus 1, because i got to drop the power. That gets me to a 0 power here, right? Uh, make that. So it really takes me... This is work we really wouldn't show. We're really going to say 5 times negative 4 is 20x, drop that power 1 to the 4th, plus derivative of x is just 1x to the power of 0, so it goes away. Okay. When I'm looking here, a whole bunch of polynomials. Okay. Remember, what we're doing is we're getting away from the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. We're getting around this whole limit process. We're letting the limit work in the background so we can find the derivative of this polynomial is the derivative of 3x to the fourth is going to be 4 times 3 is 12 x, drop the power 1 of third, and then minus, okay, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12 x, drop the power by 1 is 1, plus the derivative of a linear function is linear, the derivative of a constant is gone, so here would be my derivative of that, okay? And Let's look at a couple other ones here. We're not going to do too many. We're almost done. I mean, this is just going to be a pattern you're going to have to pick up. Now, when I'm taking the derivative of the square root of x minus x over 6 plus 2, personally, I don't like that. I like to see my exponents, so I would personally rewrite this as x to the 1 half power minus, that's 1 6 times x plus 2, and I would be taking the derivative of this because I really like to see my exponents. I need to see them as you will need to see them as well. So this is going to give me, if I power rule, my 1 half comes down in front times, so I got 1 half times 1, so I get 1 half x. Now what's 1 half minus 1? That's negative 1 half minus, this is to the first power, so I have 1 times negative a 6, and then that's going to be x to the power of 0, which is really 1 over 2 square root x minus 1 6, okay? And we don't really have to put these together into common denominators if we don't want to. Most of the time we're going to be using the derivative. We're going to solve it for 0 or we're going to do something with it, okay? So let's take a little gander at number 5. Again, number 5, before I would differentiate it, I would want to see all of my powers, okay? So I would rewrite this in my brain as negative 3x to the 4th minus 8x to the 1 half plus 3x to the negative 1 minus 7, okay? Negative exponent comes up. That's why that's in the negative 1. Fractional exponent because it's a root. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the power rule each time. I'm going to say 4 times negative 3 is negative 12x. Drop the power 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. Minus a half times 8 would give me 4x. 
1 half minus 1 gives me negative 1 half. Plus, not really plus, because now I'm taking negative 1 times 3. What's that going to do? That's going to give me a negative 3x. Now, what's negative 1 minus 1? That gives me negative 2. Okay? And then minus 7, the derivative of a constant, is gone. Okay, my constants are gone. Their slope is zero. So I really want to look at this as negative 12x cubed minus 4 over square root of x minus 3 over x squared. That's what my derivative is. Okay, that's what it is. And we're going to come on to number 6. Okay. Maybe we're going to come on to 6, the proof of the power rule. I don't know. Maybe we're not even going to worry about the proof of the power rule. I'm not going to worry about that right now. If we were in class, that would have been a little extra fun. I'm going to skip over it to save time in our video here. Okay, so application problem here. Okay, at what points, point or points, there could be more than one, Find at what points the horizontal tangents of f of x are located. Well, let's think of this. Horizontal tangents. Horizontal tangents. That means when is f prime of x equal to 0? Where are my flats of f? So if my derivative is 0, okay, doesn't that mean I had a maximum or a minimum or a flat not necessarily maximum, but a flat on f. Well, what are we going to do? Well, that's when the derivative equals 0. So let's find f prime of x. Well, f prime of x, now that we have our, our properties, are really fall out pretty fast. This is 4x to the third minus 2 times 2 is 4x. Drop the power to the 1. Okay, and then we get plus 2, derivative of the constant. That one's gone in my derivative. So we ask ourselves, when is 0? When does my derivative here, x cubed minus 4x, when does that equal 0? Well, when I look at this, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to factor a 4x out. That's going to give me an x squared minus 1. So I would take this a step further because I'm a factoring freak, and that's a difference of squares. Gives me an x plus 1, x minus 1. So my horizontal tangents, remember, this is a, a quartic. This is a fourth degree. So it can have as many as three maximums and minimums, three turns and burns. That means I have one at x equals 0. I have one at x equals negative 1. And I have one at x equals 1. Now, it didn't ask me what are the x values at which the horizontal tangents are. It says find what points. So what are the points on f that I'm going to have a horizontal tangent? Well, the first one is going to be f of 0. f of 0 is going to happen at 2. So I have a point of 0, 2. All I'm doing is plugging that point, because when I want points, they go into my original function. I'm also going to look for f of negative 1. Well, f of negative 1, well, negative 1 to the 4th is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 times, that's minus 2 plus 2. So this one should equal 1. So I also have 1 at negative 1 comma 1 is another point on f. And then I should also have f of 1. Okay, what is that going to give me? 1 minus 2 plus 2 or 1. So then I have 1 at 1 comma 1. And if I look at these, okay, let's just take this a step further. Let's take it to our graph, okay? Where do I have horizontal tangents of f? So if I took my calculator and I added myself a graphing page and I graphed, come on, x to the fourth minus... 2x squared plus 2, okay, check it out. I can see this, okay. Where do I have my flats? Looks like I have a flat at negative 1, 0, and 1. 
Well, let's see if my trace is going to find all these points for me here. Eh, escape. I just want to trace the graph, I think. Trace graph. Okay, so there's one. There's a minimum. Let me come back to the other one. Minimum. And that first one for the intercept, that's actually a maximum as well. So check it out. Check out my points. That, oh, boy. It's not going to let me grab those. There's one. There's one. And there's one. So there are my points. Now, we're going to end up using algebra to find out which one's a maximum or a minimum. Okay. But in the end, if I'm, th th this is a common thing, find when the derivative is horizontal. Okay. That's finding maximums and minimums on F in the beginning. Okay. So it's really easy to catch those. So let's squirrel along. Find the first four. Oh boy, the first four derivatives of f of x. Well, this is going to be really hard. Okay? This is crazy hard, especially with our properties. Well, if this is f, my first derivative is f prime of x. Well, let's bring them down. The derivative of x cubed, well, that's 3x squared. The derivative of negative 3x squared, that's minus 6x. The derivative of 9x is plus 9. The derivative of negative 5 is 0, so I don't write anything. Okay, what's my second derivative? Well, my second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. So what's the derivative of 3x squared? It's 6x. What's the derivative of negative 6x? Minus 6. What's the derivative of 9? It's 0. It goes away. Okay, well, what's my third derivative. Well, that would be the derivative of the second derivative. Okay, well, what's the derivative of 6x? Well, that's a line. It's 6 minus the derivative of 6 is 0. So what's my fourth derivative? Well, that would be one prime, 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 prime. Okay, or I could say uh, iv, whatever. I like to use the primes. What's the derivative of 6? It's 0. So bottom line, what I'm trying to show you here is if you take a polynomial function, meaning no fractional exponents, okay, no negative exponents, but if I take a polynomial equation, sooner or later, if I keep differentiating it, it's going to turn into a, a, a constant. Well, think about it. It's a cubic here where my right-hand end behavior kind of looks like this. And the derivative of that, what was it? Well, the derivative of that was kind of here. And the derivative of a quadratic is a linear function. And the derivative of a linear function is a constant function, okay? So here's my original function. Here's my derivative. Here's my derivative. Here's my constant. And then in that case, it's somewhere. It's either positive or negative. And then the very last one, is a horizontal line. So if I keep continually differentiating a polynomial function, sooner or later it's going to turn into zero. Okay, But one key aspect here is I really want you to focus on. This is a big AP topic. Okay, What points, the points are on the original function, the horizontal tangents of f are located. Horizontal tangents, well, that implies f prime is 0. That's why I found the derivative. And then I set the derivative equal to 0 to find these will be called critical values pretty quick. And then I took those critical values and I found the points actually on f to find those three points in the original function. So from there on out, you got the rest of the day to work on your homework. Have a good afternoon.